that was Evie. This is Evie. In real life, she is friends with Women of Impact host Lisa Bilyeu. It makes sense. In a way. Evie is a good woman. She's a strong woman. If you want an example of a strong woman, there's a place to look. She typically has her hair brushed back and in a tight bun, sometimes uh, a braided bun, like an Amazonian warrior or a side ponytail. She has extremely long, pretty blonde hair, uh, slightly longer than this wig, but the wig was not cooperating. So this is the closest I could get. She has beautiful high cheekbones that I tried to emulate with makeup as much as I could. She's exceptionally high cheekbones. And she does her uh, eyebrows in a very um, unique way that just accentuate her look. Her look is very important to her. Uh, not for what you would think. Her look and her makeup. Not for um, reasons of the approval of others. She could care less about your approval. She is a former, among many other careers, member of the Secret Service. She was taught that the way we present ourselves, the clothing that we wear, makeup, no makeup, pants in a man's industry, to look strategically serious. She used to sneak her makeup just so that she could have some semblance of her own identity until she'd get caught by her instructors at the academy and get busted and get in trouble. But she would sneak a little mascara here or there, a little blush, but she still goes for a natural look. Um, it's not overly made up. She um, is not overly made up. She is known not just for her dramatic cheekbones, her dramatic look. She looks like somebody you don't want to mess with. Her intellectual prowess and her ability to make it in a man's industry. She was quoted as saying about working as a woman in a man's industry like the Secret Service, the FBI, that she didn't take being a woman into the equation. She didn't go in there like, oh, now I'm the only woman here. It's going to be harder for me as a woman. We have a habit of doing that sometimes as women. Assuming that things are going to be hard of us because we're women, because I'm a woman. I can't pursue this career. I can't do this job. I can't be good at these stems because I'm a woman. Being a woman is irrelevant. Just take it as being irrelevant. Walk in and say, I am me and I am ready. I am me and I am capable. I am me and I am competent. Show up the most prepared, um, most educated, most equipped, most skilled, uh, most capable you can be in any venture. And um, disregard the fact, if indeed it is true that you are the only woman there. And when that question pops up, this one came from Lisa. Ask yourself, why are you here?
what else could this mean? Am I really intimidated because I'm the only woman in the room? Or is it because I'm not prepared? I don't have as much experience. I don't have enough self-esteem. Great. All those things I can learn, I can work on, I can add. Now, I take it a little different. I give it the big middle finger. <laughs> I have no problem cutting people out of my life that are going to be a uh, social, emotional vampire drain on me. Either distancing or cutting them off. I help people, as I'm known as the uh, human lie detector because I did a lot of uh, lie detector reading during my career. I have a lot of holdovers from my career that transcend into my life because once you learn a thing, you can't unlearn it. I'm hesitant to express myself in text because just in case I get subpoenaed, I don't want my personal information out there. I'd rather talk on the phone. I know how to tell if someone is lying much more adeptly than the average person. It's much easier if you know the person, you gather a baseline. See, I am not a hand talker. I, as a real person, am very much a hand talker. So you establish a baseline. This person sitting across from me, we're talking, we're talking, we're discussing, say it's an interview, or you're asking a loved one, family member, etc., a high pressure question that you need to know the truth on. When you know the person, you've established a baseline. This person is not a hand talker. They talk with an even tone of voice at a slow and steady pace. They may rock their head back and forth. They don't twitch. They don't kick their feet. They, whatever their um, basic body language as 80% of our conversation of our dialogue is body language. I am a body language expert. And once you've established their baseline, you, you observe them and get their baseline. Then you ask that pressure point and look for a change in their baseline. Maybe I start kicking my foot. Maybe I um, lean forward or I rock or I start fidgeting with my hands. Or um, my, I am a hand talker. The real me is a hand talker. And suddenly I become um, very stiff. And so you just, you make a mental note of that. And then let the conversation carry on in a casual, friendly, even manner. Circle back around that topic and see if that tick returns. Now, in, like in poker, you're beginning to establish people's tells. Evie. Is an example, an extreme example, as far as what's out there to explore on the internet of female superheroes, badass broads, um, tough women, but she's not alone in that. They just aren't a lot of examples of women like her. Um, she has her hangups. Some of that, a lot of that comes from her career. When you take such a serious career, it could be social work. It could be um, therapy. It could be um, oncology. When you have a serious job, you take a lot of that home with you and it breeds into your own psychology. You will carry that with you. Same as uh, the fact that she doesn't prefer text. She thinks of her outfits um, as a means of presenting herself as being taken uh, seriously. You may see her in a um, little shoulderless or tighter, funky little tops and stuff, but um, she typically wears pants. She's often seen in suits and black, um, similar to back when she was in the Secret Service with her hair tightly put back. 
but now she gets to wear and enjoy her makeup. And uh, now that she's out of the business, she can then appreciate all the feminine things that are out there to appreciate all the feminine aspects and still retain her masculine attributes, the toughness of will, the toughness of skill, the toughness of intellect and earned experience that have enabled her and her sheer mindset. She, like the fact that she just didn't even take into account that she was a woman. She was just like, hey, here, I'm working for the FBI. That's what I'm doing. Secret service, no problem. I got this. Uh, she didn't walk into the room thinking I am a woman and, and set herself up for a psychological uh, being less than. It's been scientifically proven that if you tell women before they take a math or science test, because statistically women uh, are statistically are less than as skilled as men at uh, the STEMs. That's why we're trying to encourage more women to enter STEM studies or other alternative um, math, science, secret service industries, because it's not that they're not capable. But the minute that we, we live up to the identity that we tell ourselves and we live up to the norms that we have been told. And so if you tell a group of women and you give them this test that they're women and women perform more poorly, they will perform more poorly on the test. If you give the same women the same test without telling them, they will get a higher score. Their scores drop, their skills drop simply by the knowledge of observing themselves as a woman who can do less than. That is not the case. You have the same intellectual, spiritual equipment same motivational capacity as anyone else. Now, Evie, not only as an expert in body language communication, uh, coming from identity where women typically, um, another generalization there, but um, people typically want to be heard. They don't want a solution. And then there is that gender conflict that comes up in traditional um, male-female relationships where the man wants to solve the problem. And I forget what the name of that is, but um, look her up and you'll find out a lot more. Um, that um, they want to fix the problem and you're an identity. And identity is where you want to just be heard. This is about me, this is about what I'm experiencing, about what I'm going through. There's several types of character um, that are just our general presets that we tend to fall into naturally. And um, it is often the miscommunication between people, no matter how close, is in the gap between the approach. Evie goes on podcasts and talks about her history her career, her service, skills and tells and information that she has learned about human communication, body language interpretation, um, how to tell if people are being deceptive to you, self-esteem, self-confidence, motivation, will, uh, etc. to help um, motivate and inspire other women. She has a very strong character. The only time I saw her with her hair down, uh, looking a little more femmy, but still um, badass femmy, uh, was on her Instagram. She dresses to be taken uh, seriously. She also, um, if you have noticed or not, she's not much of an expressive talker. Sometimes you'll get her going on various podcasts. Oftentimes she's very reserved in her body language as well. Uh, at likely a learned skill uh, because she's very aware of um, being able to be read by a body language. So she keeps herself contained um, and tries not to uh, give away too many tells. Uh, she'd be difficult to play poker with. Uh, <laughs> her husband is also in the same industry. So that relationship dynamic must be complicated. Um, we think we want to know what 
our partner is thinking at all times. And do we really? And once you know a skill, you can't unlearn it. Uh, they have to have a very excellent communication and um, management and understanding of each other to do their best not to bring their work into their relationship and um, unintentionally manipulate each other. There's a level of um, natural tactics such as mirroring, repeating the last couple of words someone said, um, mirroring their body language, etc., that um, trip our psychological triggers and make us feel instant rapport and more calm down and want to agree with what you were saying. Um, that they know from their careers that uh, they have to be careful, although it occasionally comes up to bring it up. She's talked about boundaries in a way that I, I've not heard. Typically you're informed not to look through your partner's uh, passwords. And so she has all of her husband's and her husband has all of her passwords, cell phones, etc. And she's feeling a hint of insecurity rather than allow it to build whatever the cause. Um, uh, eating a bad burrito and gave her indigestion. Now she feels funny because we get body to brain signals. And um, for some reason, it just makes her feel insecure. And so she wants to see a cell phone. And they hand it to her. They have ground rules. Each relationship is different. And what works for you, what works for her, what works for Lisa and Tom, will not work for your relationship specifically, but there are tenants to be taken from the situation. Uh, this needs to be a, a growing and continuous process throughout your relationship. Evie, I could have made a far better video, but um, I'm not feeling very well today. Sorry, Evie. Um, Evie Pomporis, uh, I probably um, pulverize your name. <laughs> is physically fit, psychologically fit, incredibly intelligent. She will tell you like it is. And um, she's still an agent. <laughs> Those, once you learn something, you don't unlearn them. Getting to know her vicariously through podcasts, Instagram, will not just allow you useful, useful tactics to um, tell if your boyfriend is cheating on you or your girlfriend is cheating on you or, you know, how to better manipulate people or, you know, it's, that's, that's not really, um, in my um, humble opinion, that's not really the main goal lesson, teaching that you will get from absorbing content from Evie. She is the closest thing to a real life superhero that I have ever seen. Uh, she's very in touch with her masculine traits. Masculine. You know that sexuality is a spectrum. Gender identity is a spectrum. This is all a spectrum and it's all social norms. She is very much in self control. Always. She's a fighter. When she grew up, she was such a fighter. She was fighting with everybody that she had to actually tone down her own uh, throwdown in order to function more properly in life. And it, she had the early insight to recognize that was a problem for her, flip it on its head and end up utilizing that pent up energy and desire to um, throw down and direct it toward her career. She has no problem taking you out when necessary, being taken seriously. She had a, a, a job that many women would think um, is out of reach. We, we tried to encourage the STEMs 
uh, we don't often talk about uh, law enforcement, um, FBI, uh, Secret Service agent uh, as a female field. Women are perceived far too often as um, flighty, uh, more emotional, more out of control, less intellectual, less um, able to plan, organize, strategize, uh, to be taken seriously, to throw down, um, to be um, competent and calculating. Evie. is a woman to be taken seriously. She hits all those points from the way that she dresses and presents herself, her body posture, her language, her mindset, her response versus reaction, the way she navigates relationships and dialogue and builds rapport the things she chooses to pursue and not pursue in her life. From the way she dresses to the way she carries herself, the way she talks, what she does, she's very calculated, very controlled. She's not manipulative, she's intelligent. She's logical. Calculated, effective not afraid, not flighty. She's not, um, I'm sure she gets emotional from time to time. Uh, men get emotional too. More than just the information, which is vast and useful that she provides on um, various platforms not just Women of Impact, which she's made presentations on various platforms um, where she helps to educate you to better um, navigate and be aware of your own um, body language from the neck down, your own presentation, uh, uh, your own interactions with other people, uh, etc. that are truly useful tools and techniques in life. Um, she, as a human being, and um, what she has done, what she has achieved, um, the career that she had, respect that she demands by the very nature of who she is, her discipline, her mindset. She um, is the anti-generalization of all women. <laughs> The only thing that falls into that uh, category is the blonde hair. You don't have to be uh, FBI, CIA. You don't have to go into a uh, male-dominated industry to not live up to uh, a stereotype of what a female is like. It is okay to be in touch with your masculine. And I have a lot to say about body language, which is really important, and building rapport. And I have a lot of experiential information to share. But what's really most important about me is that I set an example for women that you don't have to be the stereotype. You don't have to be flighty, overly feminine. You don't have to um, not command, demand, respect, not to be taken seriously. You can be logical. You can be powerful. You can go into fields from science, technical, MMA, 
things you never would have thought of from my mindset to the way I conduct and carry myself, my discipline, my consistency, my ability to speak my mind clearly, articulately, and the fact that I um, think my way through carefully, not manipulatively, carefully, logically, from the ways that I dress, wear my hair, carry myself, conduct myself, live my life, interact with others. Doesn't matter whether you are a male who wants to tap into your feminine or a woman who wants to tap into your masculine. Everyone has both. I am a walking, talking, living example of a woman who can be that you can be whatever you want to be. As masculine, as feminine, as intelligent, as strong, as you wish. And her gorgeous big brain. Discipline, self-containment, outspoken voice, masculine attributes, and career aptitudes. You're not a woman in a man's world. You're you. You just happen to be a woman. Like she said, when she walked into the FBI, she didn't think, oh, I'm a woman in a male-dominated industry. She's just like, I'm me. I'm in the FBI. Sweet, I'm the only woman here. Good for me. She is a real-life superhero. And you, too. And you, too, as Lisa Bilyeu always says, can be uh, the hero of your own life. Take a cue, look her up, learn, and take a cue from Evie about how you can truly be you. Males with femininity, women with masculinity, true to yourself, a walking, talking superhero, the hero of your own life, how you can be unstoppable. Felt powerless. Do you have a hard time bouncing back from struggles? Do you feel like you're drowning? You must face adversity to become strong because let's face it, we're all going to have setbacks and difficult situations. The loss of a family member, maybe getting fired from a job, a failed relationship. In this episode, you will learn how to approach those situations with a strong mind, because we all have the capacity to be unbreakable. You're about to learn.